In this video, I'm going to talk about how I built the best Madden 23 offense in one week. I'm going to give you some principles for how you can go about building your own offensive scheme in Madden 23. What's good, YouTube? My name is Cody. We do videos like this every single day. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Trips tight end formation in the New England Patriots playbook. And we're going to be kind of using this formation as an example formation um, as to how to go about building an offensive scheme. If you're watching this video and you want to get more in depth analysis and ebooks on Madden, make sure you join my Patreon. That's where you'll get access to all of my Madden 23 offensive and defensive ebooks. We got a full ebook on Trips tight end. We just updated it for you guys. Uh, we just dropped brand new defense defensive ebook in the patreon this week so if you want to sign up for that again the links in the description it's only 10 bucks now i want to answer the question how do you go about building your own offense in a relatively short amount of time uh, i think this is something that i've you know I've built a lot of offenses over the years and just kind of again through playing madden a lot i kind of can look at a formation and then answer the question really quickly how i would run this right so um it kind of starts with a couple of series of questions really one of the one of the foundations questions I think in any offense is the how are you going to pick up pressure question and trips tight end really does a good job of this because it has so many good play action plays play action is a really really good way to pick up pressure it also does good with this because it has a tight end on the line of scrimmage that can block it as a running back as well you could do some motion blocking there's ways to pick up pressure in this formation but the other or the next question I think really the most important question of any offensive scheme is what is your power play? This is the first play that you want to add and implement into your offense. A power play is simply a play that if you only had to run one play all game, you would probably want to pick this play. What is that play for you? And it can be different. It can be different in for any formation. People, I've seen a lot of pro players that run, you know, a lot of pro players run the gun bunch and they run it differently. There's different power plays for different people, right? So it's kind of like tailoring the offense a little bit to you and saying, what is my best play? What is my number one play? What is the play that I must make go? What is the play that I will run again and again and again to establish against the defense? So I call this a power play because it's reminiscent of the Lombardi sweep. Lombardi, the famous coach for the Green Bay Packers, uh, was infamous for running his Packers sweep. Um, that was the play that they ran again and again and again. You need that kind of play in Madden, all right? I'm going to show you um, a good example of a power play here in just a second, but I want to talk about the next couple of different things, and we're going to use audibles to kind of explain this. So another audible um, is to answer the question, what is your counter play? Okay, so once you've kind of started to run your power play, then what is your counter play? How are you going to run a counter play where it essentially goes in a different direction or it over it takes advantage of the defense over committing? What is that play in your playbook? Right. For me, um, I really like verticals, um, also like curl flat for this example. Curl flat is actually going to be our counter play. So I'm going to go ahead um, and put the play curl flat in my audibles. And then Pat's way in is going to be more of our power play, which we'll get to in just a second. Okay, so what is your counter play? What is your what is your trap play? Right? How are you going to trap the defense when they start to overcommit to your power play? You're going to get them going in one direction, and then you're going to come back in another direction. The third question that I feel like is important to answer whenever you're running an, an offense in Madden is what is your constraint theory plays? What a constraint theory play is, is it essentially a play that takes a, a, takes advantage of over-aggressive defenses, right? In Madden, um, this could be a really good quick snap play because if, there, if, if they were having to make a ton of adjustments to defend you, if you call this quick snap play, this is going to be something that you can quick snap with one hot route or less, and you're going to be able to essentially constrain the defense to make sure that you are living in a basic and perfect world kind of reminding them that they can't just make a ton of adjustments every offense i think has a, a, a good mix of you know plays that require some setup and plays that are quick snappable uh, with one hot route one hot route or less in this example for this offense we're going to use the play verticals that's going to be our primary constraint theory play and it's going to attack a lot of what people are going to leave open if they're trying to defend curl flat at a pretty high level okay so that is the idea of a constraint play this could be a screen this could be again a quick snap play uh, i think verticals in a lot of formations is really good for a constraint theory play but for trip side end we're going to be using verticals for this and then the fourth play that I feel like or the fourth question you need to answer in any offense is 
what does your run game look like? How are you going to run the ball consistently? And really it's answering the question, how are you going to run the ball in a three-headed rushing attack style? Um, a three-headed rushing attack, essentially when bad and what we're talking about is we're saying, how can we run the ball to the left? How can we run the ball to the middle? And how can we run the ball to the right? That is what you need in trips tied in. For example, if we want to run the ball to the left, we're going to use the play quick base. If we want to ball, run the ball to the right, we're going to use the play halfback counter. And if we run and run the ball right down the middle, then we can run the play inside zone. So we have a three-headed rushing attack with these three runs. But we also could have a three-headed rushing attack with one run because you could cut it in multiple directions. Okay, so that is the fourth thing. And then the fifth thing that I like to have in any effective offense is what is your red zone offense look like all right what is your red zone money play how are you going to score in your two-point conversion play your goal line passing concept how are you going to score inside the red zone when it counts the most for us we're going to be utilizing the play pa slot corner in this scheme to have an effective red zone attack so that is kind of the basic framework for how I think of any offense. And you can do this out of multiple formations, but these are the core principles, in my opinion, to have an effective offense in Madden. Now we're going to talk about my favorite power play in the game, and that is Pat's YN. I think this play is super effective. If you have um, a tight end apprentice, you're going to make it even better. You don't have to have a tight end apprentice, okay? Uh, but this play is super, super good. Pat's YN, let's get into the, the breakdown. So we're going to keep this relatively simple. I think any good power play is going to do just that. Um, I actually need to come out in man coverage. I apologize. We're going to come out in man first, then we'll get into zone. So obviously what you have to do is this play, whenever you're in a power play, especially when you're playing Madden, the play needs to have something in it that attacks the current meta defense, right? Right now the current meta defense is man coverage or man blitz. And so we have a couple things that are going to attack that. We have this little out route to Herman Moore. We have this post route to George Pickens. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put DeAndre Hopkins here on a slant. We're going to put our tight end on a crosser um, or a tight end, apprentice, tight end apprentice route of some type. And then we're going to wheel our running back. Now, you don't have to wheel your running back. This can be a simple block of the running back if you want to okay um, and what you're going to do here is you're just going to motion deandre hopkins in a step or two and what you're going to get is you're going to get these natural rubs uh, against man-to-man -man coverage so if they're playing press man a lot of times you're going to have herman moore wide open so literally all you need to do is block your running back slant deandre hopkins if you have a tight end apprentice um, go ahead and put him on a crosser um, but as you can see here, the slant is also going to give us a really good read against man-to-man -man coverage. Now, one of the things that a lot of people like to do against trips tied in, and this is one of the little quick recommendations I have, is we're going to play kind of some chess. If they're consistently playing man coverage, uh, press man-to-man, -man, and you have a receiver that has short out elite, then we can tag a fade or a streak. With short out elite, what this is going to do against press man is if you tag the streak, that short out elite is going to activate. And as you can see, we can bomb man coverage over the top with a simple simple streak. Now, once they start to back off the corner or once they start to do things like just simply put him in an outside third for this, and this is a little bit of an example of this, that's where your post becomes more helpful. So, you know, again, you can kind of tailor this a little bit to what you're seeing, um, but at the core, it's still the same basic concept, which is the slant post concept. And then we have stuff like that that we can hit over the middle of the field. So this is kind of the hallmark of any power play. And the other thing that I want to go over real briefly here is this play needs to be good against man and zone. It needs to be good against match. It needs to be good against everything that you're going to face, right? So we're going to – because there needs to be only one or two uh, ways that they can stop you. That is super important to a power play, okay? So that's the power play kind of step one to building a really good offense in a week. Wanted to do this out of trips tight end first, and then we're going to do this out of some other formations for you guys as well to kind of help you understand how do you actually put plays together and build an entire offensive system. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to learn the rest of the trips tight end offensive ebook, make sure that you join my Patreon. It's down in the description below. Ten bucks gets you access to everything. Thanks for watching the video and hope to see you guys over at the Patreon page.